You know Israeli? Tel Aviv in 2024, folks. This is inside reporting. So even even it feels peaceful, you sometimes remember. It's sweet, sour. Mm. Tel Aviv in 2024, folks. This is Inside Reporting. And I have come to present to you our field reporter, Aquaman from Walmart. Aquaman, where are we right now? We? We are here. You know Azraeli? This is the Azraeli building. It's a really nice place. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back to Tel Aviv, folks. <laughs> Today's focus of today's video, we made a video like this in 2022 where we showed you guys the city of Tel Aviv. We're trying to take a little bit of a normalcy break from obviously all the war stuff. But of course, because we are in a state of war right now in Israel, we're gonna show you guys a little bit more of uh, what it feels like to be in this big city during this time. First and foremost, because it's me and Philip, what are we gonna do? I'm fucking hungry. <laughs> Let's, eat Let's go eat some food. This is a uh, Israel Tel Aviv equivalent to Chelsea Market or uh, Borough Market in London. Is that, is that how you ride a horse? This, this is a lazy horse. This is a, you don't want to move this horse. You've been living on an island for too long. I don't think that's how you ride a horse. Ah, uh, no? No. Quit. <laughs> S serious interview. <laughs> a lot of people have been claiming that we're racist. Do you? <laughs> While sitting Ooh, on the <laughs> No way. Again, I want to show you guys a sense of normalcy. A lot of you guys in the comments too have been asking, can we come to Israel right now? Of Is course. it normal? Look, we're still in an active state of war. Uh, but I think in the coming months, you can really start thinking about it more seriously. About coming here to tour around and experience the country. Uh, Man, it's pretty quiet. Like when we, from the moment we came to Israel, there was only one time alarm. Yeah, they just try to kill us one time. So you see, this is this is something you're gonna see a lot around Israel right now. We're gonna show you guys more of this today, but bring them home now. This is in reference to all the. I think we're at 132 hostages right now that the country is keeping a very watchful eye on, uh, that are in the Gaza Strip being held by Hamas and multiple other. Uh, civilians, citizens, and also uh, terrorist groups uh, in the Gaza Strip. But you see these all over the country. And it's something that's actually really beautiful. Because you see Tel Aviv in almost every city in Israel that I've been to since I got back. In complete unison, wanting these hostages back. And you see it everywhere. Alright, so here we are at the entrance of Solana Market. This is the chain restaurant Max Brenner. This exact location that we're in right now was... Uh, the site of a terrible terrorist attack in 2016 where Palestinian gunmen came in and shot up the entire place and killed a bunch of people. It was a horrific attack. Um, but, you know, as you can see in Israeli society, everything has gone back to normal since then. Uh, but this Max Breno restaurant right here was the site of a horrific attack. That being said, we're now going to enter the Solana market and show you guys what it looks like on the inside. Madame? Thank you. It's somewhere in the zone and the vibe of uh, Chelsea Market, as I was saying, in New York City. Very, very similar. I can see there's been a lot of inspiration taken from it. But I just, I don't know, I, the way... It's changed a lot, no? It looks amazing in here. Yeah, it's, this place has changed in the best possible way. It's so beautiful on the inside and there's so many amazing food options. All right, so I want to take a quick moment just to shout out Philip. Philip is a chef and he has a new YouTube channel we just launched. Link will be in the description below. He understands food way better than I do. Uh, <laughs> all right, buddy. <laughs> I just told people to follow you. <laughs> what do we have here, man? What is know. this? It's a bagel, like a Jerusalem bagel style, uh -huh. with a pulled asado on top, veggies, a lot of sauce, a lot of yummy stuff, and I cannot. Uh, I cannot explain because I'm super hungry. What's the name of this restaurant? Uh, Spachtel. Spachtel. And it's, you know, they're playing on the classic... You can start eating and give me your reaction. <laughs> they're playing on the classic Jewish food. So a Jerusalem bagel is similar to the bagels you would get in New York, like the Jewish bagels. But they're more in a Middle Eastern style, a little more puffy, they're less thick, a little softer. They're served in the Jerusalem all over the city. And then asado is sort of a style of beef that they serve here in Israel. It's uh, the back part. It's the back part. And it's 
Wow, look at that, man. That looks amazing. Very, very well. Man, I'm excited. What do you think? Wow, 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 wow. Man, the asado. Yeah. Wow. How's the bagel? Wow. Yeah. Mole. Here, mole. Mole. Sorry, you only get one bite. It's so fucking good. I'm gonna try just the beef first. Oh. Yeah, baby. Oh my god. Yeah. It tastes like something you would eat on a Friday night at a Jewish mother's house. It's like a slow cooked Rachel. shredded beef. This Whoa. is the Spachtel of Rachel. Oh. The bagel is so soft. And it's just, it's like smothered in sauce. There's so much sauce. Mm. All the flavors here, they really say to me Israel. Like this is what the palate of Israel, the pickles, the fresh vegetables, the onion, the tomato, the salads, and then the beef and the bread. And look how they walk, they walk amazing. They walk super quick, like a machine. From the time we ordered to when we got the food was approximately, I would say less than 10 minutes. Mm. Very quick service. And it was full. And it was packed. And to wash it all down, for those of you guys who have been watching the channel for a long time, Israeli grape juice. Let me introduce to you guys. Wait. Something even better. Heaven in a bottle. That's heaven. It's to the banana. Mm -hmm. It's a strawberry banana juice. Really good. Much better from the grape one. That's a, a lie. That's false. But I will try some of it. Wow, it's good. It tastes like summer. That's what summer tastes like. Mm. So we're going to tuck into this food uh, and enjoy every last bit of it. We've got obviously more food adventures for you guys today. But uh, we're going to enjoy this right now and uh, use the energy to go show you guys some more of Tel Aviv. Absolutely phenomenal. That was uh, delicious. Wow, man. That was great. But uh, one problem. I'm still hungry. Uh, same. <laughs> what we eat now? Uh, well, let's go. Uh, let's go walk off what we just ate a little bit, and then we'll uh, we'll find the next thing. Yalla, said. But uh, uh, or how uh, I say, yalla, let's cook. <laughs> I don't know if it was a smart idea making this guy an influencer. <laughs> As we move through and around Tel Aviv today, uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of these signs. Um, these are. The posters, they've been all over planet Earth, uh, especially in major cities in the West, in the United States and Europe, um, of the Israeli hostages that are in the Gaza Strip right now, held by Hamas and other terrorist groups, as I mentioned. We're actually going to a place that commemorates them right now. But uh, something that's crazy, obviously it never happens in Israel, or very rare that it would happen in Israel, but around the world, these posters have been torn down by all kinds of people. Um, which, for you guys, just to know this, is somebody who is Israeli, who sees that on the news, like people who are in this country, <clears throat> there's no rationale that you could give that will make somebody from Israel, from this country, understand why you would rip down the poster of a hostage. You see, as we're making it closer, you can see here's more signs of more hostages. There you see the hostage poster there, and there, and there, and there, on every one of these pillars. I think this really encapsulates the experience of being in Tel Aviv at the moment. It's You can have your moments throughout the day that are fun and enjoyable, but also you have to remember, at the same point, there's about 130 people who are currently held hostage in a territory just a few miles away from us. So this is what's been dubbed the Kikara Chatufim, which is uh, the sort of area right in front of the Tel Aviv Museum of Art. It's actually surreal. There's a feeling, a very big vibe of Yad Vashem here, like a Holocaust museum. Yeah, man, I have um, a... Goosebumps? Concept. Yes, this one, I'm terrified. So, a concept for you guys to know about that we have here in Israel is a uh, Kiddush, a Friday night dinner that we do. And you can see, like, what they eat. This is a table that's been set up since October 7th, and the people who organize this are refusing to take it down until every single one of the hostages are home. And it's basically got a place for every single hostage to sit down in. And it shows our togetherness as a nation of how this is what kind of brings us all together. Every Friday night, almost every home in Israel 
whether you're religious or not, sits down to have a Friday night dinner called Kiddush. And uh, having 136 people who are hostage, who are not with us every Friday, it's a, you know, a part of the family is missing. And that's what this represents, this long table that's set. And if I remember correctly, seeing on social media, every Friday people actually come and bring food and put it down here. Yeah, it's very hard to see all this, to be honest. It's very um, difficult to take this in. This says in Hebrew, Mechakim Lachem, which means we're waiting for you. More signs of hostages. And it's, it's crazy. It's super powerful, you know? Yeah. I didn't accept, expect... You feel it immediately too, huh? Immediately. And I think everyone, you know, there is not... Nobody can... Uh, not feel this feeling that we feel right now when you get here. All the kids, all the children, the babies there. It's terrible. <coughs> what makes this place extremely hard to intake right now is because with the dawn of social media and what happened with this war, we, we saw all these people that are hostage in live get either abducted or killed over social media and it's something that as a nation and as the world we've all seen it like we can connect the faces to the videos and to all the horrific things that happened and that's something that's very very hard to intake I think it makes it it makes it extremely difficult to stand here because you can actually make a connection face-to-face -face connection with all of these people who were abducted and killed so this is here, Knisala Mishpachot Bilvad, for the families. This is only for the families to go in. So this is a demonstration with rocks that says Mechakim Lachem and a bunch of empty chairs it's something very interesting that Jewish people do on gravestones we actually leave pebbles in stone so I think this actually has a double meaning because well, it's kind of hard to talk but um, unfortunately it's pretty much a known factor now that a lot of the hostages are not actually alive anymore um, a lot of them have already been killed or died and so these uh, these rocks sort of symbolize it they have a double meaning and uh, that's even more horrific and sad this is a demonstration here. As you can see the words Nova, you might have heard this around. I'll have to explain what this is. Uh, but this is a mannequin. It says, Rak ratzinu lirkod be'ivrit. In Hebrew it says, we just wanted to dance. And it's got a DJ set and a bunch of blood all over it. You can see here some tents as well with bullet holes. So to explain a little bit about what Nova was, um, to set the facts straight, Nova was a music festival that was organized relatively close to the Gaza Strip. And uh, I think there was about 3,000 people attending there. And um, when the Hamas uh, terrorists broke into Israel, they opened fire on all of them. These weren't people who were in the army. These were just civilians who were going to a party to dance and have fun. And uh, they opened fire on them and murdered, I think it was over 300. And so this is a art piece that's set up in commemoration of that. So this is an art installation that's a replica of a Hamas tunnel that some or maybe all of the hostages are either currently in or have been passed through. Um, if you guys don't know, the Hamas terrorist organization that is also the government of the Palestinian people in Gaza has built an extensive tunnel network that spans, uh, I don't know the exact number, but it's many kilometers underground where most of the political figures live, most of the army lives, and uh, where, where a lot of the hostages were, unfortunately, went into, or brought into. And this is an art installation to sort of replicate that. Inside there were little speakers in there where you could hear the sound of bullet holes and fighting and guns and explosions. A very, very powerful display. So we came down to the beach a little bit. It's been about a half hour since we saw what we saw. Uh, we just came to clear our minds a little bit. 
walked around the beach just to kind of think. Um, I don't know how to open what I want to say. It's interesting. Like, for the last couple months, we've been seeing online on the internet, like, like a lot of hate towards Israel, towards Jewish people. And then you go to a place like that, you see, you see sort of firsthand how, and this is months after, but you see firsthand how much it's affected our nation and our people. And you're just kind of like, I'm a little bit disgusted by everything that I've seen online. And it, yeah, I think that's the best way to put it is I'm, I'm like, I'm grossed out. I'm disgusted by people's inability to look at what happen, what's happened to Israel and be able to feel any sort of sympathy for it. I don't know. Man, I'm out of thought. I didn't thought that it would be so strong to see all of it. You know, you see all the Nova places that they uh, show uh, what happened there. And Sorry to cut you off, but these are military helicopters going towards Gaza? Probably. There you go. And these are like attack helicopters, no? Oh yeah. Those are the ones that have guns on them. So even even it feels peaceful, you sometimes remember you see military helicopters and we're still in the city. Yeah, you see it everywhere uh, in the street too, you know, everyone with uh, weapons on, on the streets. Yeah. Like all the soldiers and Yeah. And yeah. To see what we saw there, it's uh, you know, with the tunnel and everything, it's it's strong. It's, it's very, very strong. powerful. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we can add because it's been so many months since it happened. But something that I think yeah, about it's still super strong. It's like, super strong. It's the main thing that all Israel. Uh, uh, talk about yeah I feel like something that that isn't talked about enough is the trauma that people experience during this like collectively you're gonna have a lot of people and I think me and Philip as well included in this and people that weren't even here but the things that we've seen in the last couple months online the videos the pictures the stories you heard it's shit that stays with you I think forever like I I'm, think mostly the soldiers that see all the all the shit over there. Yeah. I think this is the people who are going to be traumatic for many, many more years. And Israel don't have enough power, manpower to deal with all of it. You know, it's uh, too much people that now uh, join back to the army to save and protect us. It's going to be hard even after when we finish this war. That's for sure. Even maybe harder for the soldiers. Because then everything go up and... But at least on a, on a light note, on a good note, from what we've tried to show you today, and what we're going to continue to show you uh, throughout this video, is there's a sense of resilience. Like, the people here... You can shit on them. You could bomb them every day. We still live. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. fuck <laughs> I mean, everyone. obviously they care. <laughs> but you see, this the place is. There's no tourists here right now. Like the place is still operating. People are taking a surf lesson. You know, it's like the the restaurants are still going. <laughs> it's think life is is still operating. So as much as the enemies around us, you know, the people, the the terrorists in Lebanon. And the violence that happens towards us from Egypt and from Jordan, even though we have peace with them, and from Syria and from Iran and Iraq, and everyone who threatens to destroy this place that's, that's so beautiful and so amazing, uh, in the name of liberation, you'll never be able to do it. Because you see the resilience of the people on the day-to-day. -day. You see how Philip continuously looks at himself in the... <laughs> in, the, in the LCD screen <laughs> there is an LCD screen the size of one centimeter and he's still looking at himself <laughs> what do you want that we look at you <laughs> but this is this is the magic of the Israeli people There's, we never stop you can't stop you can't put them down 
Yeah, I don't think you can break these people. Uh, and that's an amazing thing to be a part of. It's a privilege to be a part of it. So what do you say? You hungry? Always. <laughs> Let's go wow, eat some more I food. I wanted to say it. <laughs> to say that you stop talking, man. Let's go eat some more food. <laughs> All right. So the other day, Philip and I took you guys to the Kalman Market or Shuka Kalman, which is probably the most famous market in all of Israel. Now we've come to Shuk Levinsky, Levinsky Market. This one specializes a little bit more in like spices, spices. and things like I, that. When I used to live in Israel, I used to buy here all the time my spices my nuts seeds whatever I buy here and then all those spices go into some very authentic ethnic restaurants because there's already like a Yemenite restaurant here a Persian restaurant here a few we've also come for a mission to show you guys a very special dish I don't think I've ever showed off on this YouTube channel maybe other than my grandma's house but first let's take a look at the spices yalla so what when you used to work in a restaurant you used to come here to buy these spices to buy these things for cooking no, for the restaurants we used to get it uh, from com from direct companies. Mm -hmm. But uh, to my house, I used to come uh, here and buy uh, from here. In Just directly from here. Uh, Tavlinsky, it's over there. Is it is it actually any cheaper to come here and buy this from like a supermarket or something like that? Uh, yes and no, like because this is more much more quality quality spices. Uh -huh. So it's a little more expensive for what you you find uh, in the shops in the supermarkets but it's worth it and you can buy it in bigger amounts oh look at this these are like little pastas and stuff or chips they could deep fry so this was your choice huh for spices yeah the thing here well, look, they have a bunch of fresh teas. This is Marva, no? Yeah, sage. Ah, it's sage? Yeah. It grows wild all over Israel, and it's really good for stomach aches. Really cool plant as well. We use it for cooking a lot. Yeah, you're the only person I've ever seen cook with it before. Really? Yeah. The thing that I like here the most, they don't blend the spices with uh, extra stuff. Usually when you buy spices in boxes in the supermarket, it's blended already with salt and stuff to make it bigger. Mm. Okay, and then you need to use a lot of the spice uh, to fill the flavor. Here you don't need. Here you use a little from the spices and you get the most of the flavor. So here it's really natural and raw. Yeah. That's awesome. Exactly. That's great. You can see, you can see even on the packaging here. Look at that. Chai, masala chai, Bedouin chai. That's awesome. Okay, most important thing. Yeah, we came for food. <laughs> Let's go eat. <laughs> and look at that. Just just as we wanted, we made it to the exact restaurant I wanted to go to. Uh -huh. My God, look at that. That's so exciting. So exciting. This is called Kuba Siddiq in Hebrew or in the Iraqi Jewish dialect it's called Kuba Shwanda. You can see this, it's a ball of semolina flour with ground beef in the inside and a beet soup around, kind of similar to the concept of borscht but in my opinion a little bit better, it's a little more sour. It is, in my opinion, it's probably my favorite thing on planet earth to eat. It's the one dish that makes me feel like home because my mom used to make this growing up and my grandma as well. And it's a traditional recipe from Iraq. And I'll show you guys how amazing the inside looks. If I can just fish one out. Look at that. Do a close up, Filos. See that ground beef on the inside? Ooh la la. It's sweet, sour. Mm. Wow. My grandma would be very angry at me for eating somebody else's kuba. But. Just as my grandma used to serve it with white rice on the side. This is the best thing in the world. It's so good. Fill up. So I used to work actually in a restaurant that made kube mm -hmm. in Elat, back in Elat. So my favorite one is the hamusta. Uh, it's more uh, sour and uh, with a lot, lot, lot of garlic. And it's more flat usually, right? Yeah. Man, and the soup is much more sour from the beet. The beetroot usually it's more sweet. Yeah. Wow, yeah. look at that. Yeah, it's more like a pancake. Mmm. I love the chamusta as well. Man. 
something that I didn't know about Hamusta till I was a little bit older is Hamusta actually also comes from Iraq, but it's the Kurdish, the Kurdim or the Kurdish Iraqi ethnicity that makes this uh, that makes this soup. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm uh, being a. What? Why you steal my? I'm kube? being a sneaky Jew. I'll take it and I will eat it. Very nice. Hamusta. Mmm. Wow. So good. There's so much flavor in it. It's so powerful. And you can talk about this one. The kusamachshi. That's from your side. <laughs> so kusamachshi, it's a kishu filled with rice. Kishu is a zucchini. And this comes from Egypt. This is your ethnicity. In general, it's Arabic. Yeah. Really nice. Really good. Everything that's filled, you know, if you take a veggie and put inside rice, meat, or other vegetables, for me, it will always will be a winner. And this one is basically zucchini mixed or filled with rice, no? No, no meat inside no. this one. Mm. Wow. I remember when I had this in Egypt, I was mind blown at how delicious it was. So good. This one is really fun. In Hebrew, we call it cigarim, which is like a cigar. As you can tell, the shape is similar. But you smoke it. It's some sort of uh, pastry dough, like a... Uh, is it phyllo dough? F phyllo? No. What's it called? It's uh, leaves. Uh, leaves dough. Uh, uh, puff dough. Yeah, like puff, oh, puff pastry. That's what it is. Puff pastry dough. And it's usually filled with some amazingly spiced ground beef. This one is from the Moroccan ethnicity, usually. But every Jew that comes from the Mizrahi, Sephardi background usually eats this one. Mmm. Wow. Man, the flavor is so specific. Yeah, but you didn't do it correct, man. You need to put on a tahini. What is it? Ameba? Panikota? Wow, that amba is neon. Mm. Put for me a bit of a tahini. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. Man, to fry stuff. Just let's fry the everything. This is essentially like coming to a grandma's house and eating food from a grandma. And it's so specific because it's not like this isn't like a shawarma or falafel you see everywhere. This is more specific food you'd have to kind of go to a family to eat. But the nice thing is there's enough people from the Iraqi background who've kept the tradition going here and we can find this readily available almost everywhere. Ending the day on a wonderful meal here today. Wow, that was delicious. Huh? It's very nice. It's very nice. It's you know what? Nice this is the, a constant theme too with the with the owners of the restaurants. They're so fucking friendly. <laughs> it's like yeah, a family. It's really yeah, it's so nice. It's like what what for you? What I put for you in the yeah. pizza? Because I think I think in Israel on the opposite end with the really fancy restaurants, the vibe is kind of not so good. It's a little bit like with the nose up, nose up a little bit. It's not as fun, but when you come to these like family joints where it's cheaper food, I and call it uh, the street food of Israel. Yeah, the, the, the families come all together like we eat in the Carmel. Yeah, let all the family cook, then the kids sell it in the Carmel. This is the real uh, street food in there. And the vibe is so much more fun. Like the the restaurant owners are just like they treat you like you're like uh, a family, like, like you're a you're family. Part of the family. <laughs> Like uh, always they ask you eat enough, you need more, let me give you this, taste this, taste this. Like you you cannot go out from this restaurant not full. Yeah, and I'm full now. Yeah. Guys, make sure you check out Philip's YouTube channel down below in the description. He's doing a lot of cooking videos. Maybe in the future he'll even make a Cuba uh, yeah, cooking I video. I will teach. I will teach. I used yeah. to work in a you, Cuba restaurant in Iraq. Like. I like. So it's go nice. go subscribe to him, support his channel. Appreciate you guys supporting this channel. We'll see you in the next one. I love you long time. Goodbye, class.